Tape's rolling. Okay, everybody, we're gonna get started. All the ladies, cover your heads. Well, maybe I should be up here when I say. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get started. All the ladies, cover your heads. And we're gonna stand and face Jerusalem. The earth is the Lord's. The earth, the earth is the Lord's. Lord's. And the fullness thereof. And, and the fullness thereof. thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. The world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas. For he hath founded it upon the seas. And established it upon the floods. And established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands. He that hath clean hands. And a pure heart. And a pure heart. Who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity? Who hath not lifted up his soul to vanity? Nor sworn deceitfully. Nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up. Even lift them up. Ye everlasting doors. Ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. Selah. I read Psalm 24, verses 1 through 5, and verses 9 and 10. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Hello, everybody. Welcome to Israel's Church of Living God. I'm Brother Rodney. And Brother Jeff will be reading today. Uh, we'll be doing a lesson today, Body, Soul, and Spirit. Body, Soul, and Spirit. You know, uh, people look at this scripture here in uh, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and they think man comprised of three components. You know, body, soul, and spirit. Right? So we're going to show you in this lesson that the body and the soul, they are one and the same. The soul is the complete person, and the body is a complete person. God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He didn't put a soul inside of him. He didn't put a soul inside of man. Man is the soul. Now, we're going to go to Isaiah first. We're going to go to Isaiah, the 10th chapter, and we're going to look at this in the old book first. Isaiah 10. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. I'm sorry, verse 16. Isaiah 10 and 16. Isaiah 10 and 16. Audrey, we need you to man the camera. Isaiah 10 and 16. Everybody got it? Amen. Amen. Go ahead and read. Therefore, therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, 
Sin among his fat ones leaneth, uh -huh. and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. Go ahead. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, uh -huh. and his holy one for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. Go ahead. And shall consume the glory of his forest uh -huh. and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. Hold it now. You see what he said? And both soul and body. As though, you know, we're talking about two different things right here. Read that again. 18. Uh-huh. And shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, uh -huh. both soul and body. Uh-huh. And they shall be as when a standard, a standard bearer fainteth. Now, he said, and shall consume the glory of his feet forest and of his fruitful field, both body and soul. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fainteth. So we look like, you know, the body and soul are two different things, right? <coughs> Let's go now. And, 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 you know, you can ask me, well, if it's not talking about two, then why does the Lord have the prophet to write this? Like this. I don't know. But I'm going to show you in another place, in another place where the Lord, he says the same thing twice. Two different words, but it's talking about the same thing. Let's go now. Let's go to Matthew 10, chapter, Matthew 10. And this is a scripture that everybody likes to use right here when they want to say that the body and soul are two different uh, 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 things here. But I'm going to show you the body and the soul are the same thing. And then we're going to show you what this spirit is too. You know, some people might think that this spirit is talking about the breath. Those of us that have a little understanding might think that this is talking about the breath. But this is not talking about the breath. I'm going to show you this is not talking about the breath. Uh, okay, we're gonna, I'm going to go a little ahead of myself. Let's go to Matthew 10 and 23. Matthew 10 and 23. Verse 23. Go ahead and read it. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. Uh -huh. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Uh -huh. the, dis the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Go ahead. It is enough for the disciple... That he be as his master uh -huh. and the servant as his lord. Go ahead. If they have called See, you're supposed to be like your the disciple's supposed to be like his master and the servant like his lord. So whatever the Lord done, that's what we're supposed to be doing. If we servants, right? Go ahead and read though. Middle 25. Uh-huh. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Uh-huh. Fear them not, therefore. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, uh -huh. and hid that shall not be known. Go ahead. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. Go ahead. And fear not them which kill the body. And fear not them which kill the body. Go ahead. But are not able to kill the soul. But are not able to kill the soul. Now it looks like that we're talking about two different things right here, don't we? He said, fear not them that can pick, kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Go ahead. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body. Which are hell. able to, so, but fear him which is able to kill both what, soul and body and cast it into hell. Now, you know, some people say that, you know, uh, the souls don't die. Well, if you cast a soul in hell, ain't it dead? It is dead. A soul can die right now. On this planet, and it also could die in the world to come. Because he said, uh, uh, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both, both soul and body in hell. Now we look like we're talking about two different things here, don't we? Body and soul. What Jesus, I'm going to show you later on in this lesson exactly what he's talking about. He's just tell, really just telling you to fear him. That's who he's telling you to fear him. That's who he's telling you to really fear him. And that's what this thing is all about. It's not about the body and the soul. It's about you fearing God. That's what this is about. But we're going we're gonna to deal with that later on in this lesson. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter. Because now, right here, people say that there's three components to man now. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. <clears throat> and if I was going to say that it was 
body and soul, I would go to that scripture too. You know, if I was going to say it was more than, you know, the body and the soul weren't the same thing, I'd go to that scripture too. But I understand that the body and the soul are the same. And I would go here too, 1 Thessalonians 5. But we're going to show you what this is talking about though. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. That's 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. Go ahead and read. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Uh huh. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Go ahead. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit. Hold it, hold it. He said, I pray God your whole spirit. Uh huh. And soul. Uh huh. And body. And body. He said, your so he said, your spirit, your soul, and your body, didn't he? I pray your whole spirit, your soul, and your body. Go ahead. Be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now hold it now, hold it. I don't understand if you want to say your body and your soul being blameless. But what about your spirit though? How can your spirit be blameless? What does it, what does it mean your spirit be blameless? We're going to deal with that too. Let's go to, uh, so he said, I pray that your whole body, soul, and spirit present be presented Blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does he mean by the spirit? I can understand the body and the soul, but what about the spirit, though, being blameless? We're going to show you what this is talking about. Let's go to, uh, we're just setting the groundwork a little bit. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. 1 Corinthians 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 8. We're going to read one verse, verse 8. 1 Corinthians 1 and 8. Go ahead and read that. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? Now hold it now. Now he said that you may be blameless. You, that means that's the whole person, ain't it? He said that you may be blameless unto the uh, coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you, that's, that, 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 you, that's everything, ain't it? Your, your mind, your body, your soul, that's everything, ain't it? Now, we're going to come back to this. We're going to deal back with this a little bit more. Uh, first, let's show you what man is. Let's show you what man is. Let's go to Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Romans 6 and 12. Romans 6 and 12. Anybody got it? Amen. Go ahead. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Hold it now. He said, let not sin reign in your mortal body. <coughs> now, so we are mortals, aren't we? What are mortal? Mortal means we are subject unto death. This flesh is subject unto death. That's immortal means that you are not subject unto death. That's what an immortal is. But we're dealing with a mortal right here. He said, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, go ahead. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Now, how do you obey something? You obey something with your mind, don't you? That's how you obey something with your mind. You know, so let's keep in, keep in context what we're dealing with right uh, today. We're dealing with my, uh, body, soul, and the spirit. This is what we're uh, 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 dealing with today. <laughs> let's go now. Let's go to Job. Uh, let's see what this man, how he made this man. We're going to Job, the 10th chapter. Job 10 and 8. Job 10 and 8. Let's see how he made this man. It's getting a little warm down here, ain't it? John 10, I'm um, Job 10 and 8. I rarely <laughs> see that. <laughs> Job 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Job 10 and 8. Go ahead and read that. Thine hands have made me and fashioned me together round about. Now he said, Thou hands have made me and fashioned me round about. Go ahead. Yet thou dost destroy me. Uh huh. Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as the clay. He said, Thou hast made me as the clay. And you know how you make clay. You take clay and you make objects out of it, don't you? Well, that's how he made this man as clay. Go ahead and read. This is how he formed the man. This is how he fashioned him. Ask Clay. Go ahead and read. Middle of nine. Uh-huh. 
And wilt thou bring me into dust again? He said, wilt thou bring me into dust again? Go ahead. Has thou not poured me out as milk and uh -huh. curdled me like cheese? He said, you have poured me out like milk and curdled me like cheese. Go ahead. Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh. Hold it now, hold it. You see what he clothed it with? Skin. Now we're talking about a man here, aren't we? He said, thou hast clothed me with skin and with flesh. And that's what we're clothed with, aren't we? What else, we, what else he gave his man? Go ahead. And has fenced me with bones and sinews. And this is how he knitted man together with bones and sinews. Sinews mean this is how he knitted them together. Skin, bones, and flesh. And we know that he put blood inside a man, don't we? Go ahead. What verse you at? Verse 12. Uh-huh. Thou hast granted me life and favor. Uh-huh. And thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. And thou hast granted me Life and favor and thy visitation have preserved my spirit. What is this spirit that he's talking about? It preserved my spirit. This is the breath. Now we're not going to deal too much with the breath, that spirit. We deal with that in another lesson. But this is what he, this how he made the man, and this is what makes the man mobile, don't it? The breath, don't it? This is what makes him mobile. This is what gave him life, ain't it? Now let's go. Let's go to uh let's go to Ezekiel the 37th chapter. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, and we're gonna pick it up at verse uh pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel 37 and 1. We're gonna look at this again. Now look at what he's telling Israel right here. Ezekiel 37 and 1. And this is the dry bones in the valley. This is talking about Israel. These dry bones in the valley. But look at what he's saying right here, though. Ezekiel 37, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read that. The hand of the Lord was upon me, uh -huh. and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, uh -huh. and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Go ahead. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, uh -huh. and lo, they were very dry. Go ahead. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? He said, son of man, can these bones live? Can they live? Go and look at what he had to do to them, though, to make them live. This is symbolism, but he's, we're still dealing with a body right here. Go ahead and read. Middle of three. Uh-huh. And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. Uh-huh. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. He said, prophesy upon these bones. Can a bone hear? No, we ain't talking. See, this symbolism. A bone can't hear. Ears here, right? But this we deal with symbolism here. But look at what he's saying, though. He's he's likening these bones and uh, what he's saying right here to a body. Go ahead and read, though. And say unto them, uh -huh. O ye dry bones, uh -huh. hear the word of the Lord. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Uh -huh. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, oh, uh -huh. and ye shall live. Oh, this what made these bones live? Breath. This is what made these bones live. The breath. Because he said, you have preserved my spirit, right? You have clothed me with skins and flesh and bone, or sinews with bones, right? Then he said, you have preserved my spirit. Now he's telling you, thus said the Lord God, use these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Go ahead, because this is what's going to cause man to live. Breath, ain't it? Go ahead and read. Verse 6. Uh-huh. And I will lay sinews upon you, uh -huh. and will bring upon, and will bring up flesh upon you. See, this how he knitted man together. Sinews mean knitted together. Go ahead. And cover you with skin, uh -huh. and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now, so let me let's go back and show you this. Let's go back and show you this. Let's go to Genesis the second chapter, Genesis two, and we're gonna pick it up. At birth, that we're gonna show you the first man, and this is this is the same thing he did, just like we just read about how the Lord gonna do Israel when He brings them back together, when He brings Israel back to back to life again. You understand? Because right now, Israel dry bones in the valley. Israel's dry bones in the valley. But let's go back now. We're going back to uh. I'm sorry, let's go to Isaiah first. Isaiah 57 first. I'm sorry, Isaiah 57 first. Going a little ahead of myself. Isaiah 57. 
Uh, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Isaiah 57 and 15. Isaiah 57 and 15. Everybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read that. For well, thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, uh -huh. whose name is holy. Go ahead. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, uh -huh. to revive the spirit of the humble, Go ahead. and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Uh -huh. For I will not contend forever. He said, I will not contend forever. Go ahead. Neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit should fail before me, and the souls which I have made. Hold it now. He said, for well, the spirits shall fail before me. And what? The souls which I have made. Now we look at the Lord. He the one said he created these souls, didn't he? Now, let's go back and see how he created this soul. We know he's fisted with bones and side news and all that stuff. But let's go back to the beginning and see how he done it. We're going back to Genesis, the second chapter. Genesis 2 and 7. We're going to read one verse. Genesis 2 and 7. 2 and 7. <clears throat> Let's see how he done it from the beginning. Genesis 2 and 7. Everybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read that. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Hold it now, hold it. Now you see what he formed man with? The dust of the ground. And what did he do? And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Uh huh. And man became a living soul. Oh, you see that? He said he breathed into his nostrils, just like we saw the Lord say he's going to breathe on those bones, didn't he? And they're going to come to life. He said, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Now, did he put a soul inside of this man? He put no soul inside him, did he? No, sir. He became, so man is a soul then, isn't he? He is a soul, not no soul. You know, I was uh, uh, listening to these guys last night on, on, uh, on the internet talking about the soul. And the guy, was, he had the other guy, so he had me confused. I know the guy he was talking to, he was confused too. Because the one that was talking, he was confused. He talking about the soul is an, a mass of energy and you know how the soul is the spirit compared to one another and all this type of stuff. What is this dude talking about? Your soul is your body, and the Bible plainly tells you. He's trying to make the soul some type of inner being. You understand that? Helps men to think and reason and everything. This your soul. No, that ain't your soul. That is your mind. That's what that is. But that's what helps you understand and reason and everything. Your mind, your brain does. Not your soul. Otherwise, what you need a brain for? That's right. Let's go now. We had uh, 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 we're going to uh, Genesis. Did we? We going to Genesis. I'm sorry. Read that again. I'm getting a little heated. Mm -hmm. Let me calm down a minute. Verse seven. Yeah. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, uh -huh. and man became a living soul. Didn't put no soul inside of him. He became the soul when God breathed on him, didn't he? Just like he breathed on the bones and he said, you're going to live. What live? The man did, didn't he? Not, not, uh, not no soul inside of the man. Let's go, to, uh, let's go to Numbers. Let's go to Numbers, the 31st chapter. Numbers 31. Numbers 31, and we're going to pick it up at verse 25. Numbers 31 and 25. Numbers 31 and 25. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, uh -huh. both of man and of beast, uh -huh. thou and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the prey into two parts, uh -huh. between them that took the war upon them, uh -huh. who went out to battle, and between all the congregation, uh -huh. and levy a tribute unto the Lord, of the men of war which went out to battle. Uh -huh. So now he's going to divvy the men that went out to war. The spoils of war is going to be divided up among them. In other words, the booty. 
It's going to be dry, uh, 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 divided up among the men of war. Go ahead and read. Let's see how you're going to divide it up. But go ahead now. Middle 28. Uh-huh. One soul of 500. Wait a minute. One soul of 500. Go ahead. Both of the persons. Hold it now. He said both of the persons. You see what he just called a soul? A person. Because that's what a soul is, a person. The full person. You understand? The eyes, the nose, the mouth, the brains, the legs, the arms. This is a person. This is the soul. Read that one more time. All 28? Yes. 28. And Livia tribute unto the Lord of the men of war which went out to battle. Uh -huh. One soul of 500, uh -huh. both of the persons and of the bees uh -huh. and of the asses and of the sheep. Now he said, and, and, and levy a tribute unto the, uh, unto the Lord of the men of war, which went out to battle. One soul of 500, both of what? Persons, and of bees, and of the asses, and of the sheep. Skip down to verse 41 and read. And Moses gave tribute. Which was the Lord's heave offering unto Eleazar the uh -huh, priest, uh -huh. as the Lord commanded Moses. Go ahead. And of the children of Israel's half, which Moses divided from the men that wore. Uh -huh. Now the half that pertained unto the congregation was three hundred thousand and thirty thousand and seven thousand and five hundred sheep. Uh huh. And thirty and six thousand bees. Uh huh. And that's some like that's some type of livestock. You know, I already said beef. You know, this is another name for beef, like cow, you know. But go ahead and read, though. 45. Uh-huh. And 30,000 asses and 500. So Moses dimming all this up, isn't he? Go ahead and read. And 16,000 persons. Uh, and 16,000 persons. So what are you going to do with these persons? He's going to make these people like slaves. You understand what I'm saying? He's going to get these to the... These, these, these persons that, cut, uh, that uh, were held captive of the war... They were given to the men of war. You know, like make, they were made slaves. Just like he gave them all his livestock. He gave these people too. Verse 47. 47. Go ahead. Even of the children of Israel's half, uh -huh. Moses took one portion of 50, both of man and of beast. Both of man and of beast. So what did he give them when he gave them them souls? He gave them men, didn't he? Teach. And beast. Go ahead and read. And gave them unto the Levites, uh -huh. which kept the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, uh -huh. as the Lord commanded Moses. As the Lord commanded Moses. So, you know, you see what souls are. They're persons. Not no inside of a person, but they are some persons. Man. That's what the soul is, man. We're going to deal with the soul a little bit more uh, later on in this lesson. But now, let's go, let's go, uh, Let's go to uh, uh, Maca, uh, 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 Micah. Let's go to Micah, the sixth chapter. Micah 6. Micah, the sixth chapter. So far, we said that this soul is the same as a man. Now, you know, I've been all through the book and uh, through the concordance and looking up and all through the book, looking up this word soul, and I don't see nothing that pertains to, because some brother try to say the soul of the spirit, they want they the same. I'm like, how? You don't see that. And then, you know, the guy last day was talking about man is a spirit. I'm like, oh, that which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. So now, either we flesh or either we spirit. Take your choice now. The book say we flesh, don't it? Don't say we no spirit. Yeah, we living in a spiritual world. We are. Well, then, we living in a spiritual world that has so much chaos and evil going on. Because in this world, right, the next world to come, that's the spiritual world. And we will be spirits dwelling in that world if we make it. But this world right here pertains to flesh and blood. That's what this world pertains to, flesh and blood and blood. I'm sorry, flesh and, uh, yeah, flesh and blood. And that's what we are, flesh and blood. Now, spirits, yeah, they're in this world too, but can we see them? No, we can't see them right now. We cannot see them. 
But when we get to the other world, it's going to be all spirits. Ain't going to be no more flesh. So we're not living in no spiritual world. We're living in a physical world right now. We're not no spiritual world. That's right. <laughs> we at uh, Micah, the sixth chapter, and we're going to pick it up in verse six. Micah six and six. Go ahead and read it. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Uh huh. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? Uh huh. With calves of a year old? Go ahead. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Uh -huh. Or with ten, ten thousands of rivers of oil? Go ahead. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? He said, hold it now. So he said, shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions? Go ahead. The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. Woo, wait a minute. You mean a soul can sin? Well, then the soul is the one that should be guilty then, not you. If so, if we, if you see what he just said, he said, the fruit of my, should I get, I gave my firstborn, wait a minute, let me go back, he said, shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? So the soul can sin then, can <laughs> If it's, a, now how, you know, why is your soul going to be inside of you and sin, except you the one sinning? I mean, come on. I mean, you know, people don't read, first of all. Then when they try to read something, they go to a scripture. It say one thing like body, soul, and spirit. Now, oh, there it is. Because every brother they tried to get to jump me yesterday, they went to the very same scripture. About three of them. Four of them. <laughs> I don't know. But everyone went to the same scripture, though. But then when you hit them with something like this, now they, now they puzzled. They're puzzled. So he said, I give my firstborn, should I give my firstborn for my transgression, for the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? A soul can sin? Yes, it can. Why? Because man is a soul. Every bit of him is the soul. Let's go now. You want to finish verse 8? Yeah, go ahead. Verse 8. Uh-huh. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. Uh-huh. And what doth the Lord require of thee? He said, He have showed thee what is good, O man. See, we talk about a man right here when we talk about a soul. Look, there, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But to do justly, uh -huh. and to love, and to love mercy, uh -huh. and to walk humbly with thy God. And to walk humbly with thy God. So he said, what the Lord require thee but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the Lord thy God. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. 1 Thessalonians 3. 1 Thessalonians 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 11. Because he said, I pray that your, uh, uh, your uh, body of your soul, body, and your spirit be blameless, didn't he? What does he mean by this spirit? Because we're going to come back to that soul in a little bit. What do you mean by this spirit being blameless? But we know us that are, uh, us that uh, that uh, that have some understanding. We know that there's more than one spirit, don't we? Yes, you know, you got the breath. That is a spirit. Can that be blameless? No. We know that an angel. That is a spirit, don't we? Can that be blameless? We ain't talking about no angel. We talking about a man, aren't we? Come on. Let's go now. We had a. Uh, 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 we have 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. 1 Thessalonians 3, and we're going to pick up at verse 11. 1 Thessalonians 3 and 11. Go ahead and read. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ uh -huh. direct our way unto you. Go ahead. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love uh -huh. one toward another uh -huh. and toward all men, even as we do toward you. Go ahead. To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable. Hold it, hold it, hold it now. First he said, your spirit, soul, and body be unblameable, didn't he? Now he said, to the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable. Now, you know, what is this heart right here? You're talking about unblameable. Read that one more time. 13. Uh -huh. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable uh -huh. in holiness uh -huh. before God. Unblameable in holiness before God. Go ahead. Even our Father 
at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ uh -huh. with all his saints. Now, what, now this, what does he mean, your heart? Unbelievable. Your heart, this your heart, ain't it? <laughs> Is this, can this be unbelievable? Are we talking about this heart right here? We couldn't because this heart right here, that's all it does is pump blood. It don't think and, you know, cause you to sin or cause you to even walk in righteousness. You understand what I'm saying? So we're looking at another heart right here. We ain't looking at this heart right here. Let me show you. Let's go now. Because he said, I want your body, your soul, your body, and your spirit to be blameless, didn't he? Let's go now. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Let's look at this heart for a minute. Jeremiah 17. Because, you know, some people say, well, I'm going to do what my heart leads me to do. Well, okay. Well, let me show you something about this heart real quick. John's, uh, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 9. Jeremiah 17 and 9. <coughs> Go ahead and read. The heart is deceitful above all things. Oh, wait a minute. He said the heart is deceitful above all things. So, then, you know, your heart is deceitful. What? Is he talking about this heart right here? Where does deceit lie? In your mind. That's where the deceit lies. In your mind, he said the heart is deceitful above all things. Go ahead. And desperately wicked. And desperately wicked. Is this right here wicked? <laughs> This ain't, this way ain't where the wicked come from. The wickedness don't come out this hard, here, do it. Wickedness come from this heart. This heart, this is the heart that we're dealing with, the mind. Like I said, this heart here don't do nothing but pump blood. The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked, go ahead. Who can know it? Uh-huh. I, the Lord, search the heart. Uh-huh. And try the reins. He said, I search the heart and try the reins. Go ahead. Even to give every man according to his ways. Uh -huh. And according to the fruit of his doing. He said, I'm going to give every man according to his ways. This right here don't determine your ways. This heart right here don't determine your ways. This heart is what determines your ways. But you see, when you say the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So you can't put no trust in your mind, can you? You can't trust in this, your mind. You got to trust in the word of God, don't you? Yes, teach. You can't trust in your mind. That's why he said, in all thy ways, acknowledge me, and I will direct thy paths. Because, you, you know, you, this man, is he going to take you off somewhere. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. He said, it is desperately wicked, though, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Let's go now. Let's look at this again. And let's see what he called. Let's go to Proverbs, the 21st chapter. Proverbs 21, and we're going to pick it up at verse 27. 21 and 27. Now, let's keep in contact with what we're dealing with now. We're dealing with the body, the soul, and the spirit. And he wants to be what? Blameless. We have Proverbs 21 and 27. 21 and 27. Now, he said the, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, didn't he? 21 and 27, read that. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. Uh-huh. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? Go ahead. 28. Hold on. He said, well, you went kind of fast. <laughs> <laughs> read that slow again. Go the, ahead. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. Go ahead. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? Ooh. Now you see what's wicked? <laughs> the man is wicked, ain't it? Jeez. That's the heart that he told me. He said, uh, 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 it is deceitful above all, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Now we see right here that he said that the man is wicked. Mm -hmm. Heart, mind, same thing in the Bible, what we dealing with. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We dealing with the man. That's what's desperately wicked. And that's what he wants to be blameless. Your mind, not this heart. When he say he wants your uh, your uh, spirit to be blameless, that's what he mean. He wants your mind to be blameless. Let's deal with it a little bit more. Let's go into a little bit more. Let's go to First Samuel the second chapter. First Samuel two. I'm going too fast, ain't I? First Samuel two. Let's go to 
And we're going to pick it up at verse 35. 1 Samuel 2 and 35. Everybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read it. And I will raise me up a faithful priest uh -huh. that shall do according to that which is in my heart. Hold it now. In my what? In my heart. In my heart. Go ahead. And in my mind. And in my mind. He talking about the same thing right here. Heart and mind, same thing. Just like when he said body and soul. He talking about the same thing. Now why he repeats it like this? I don't know. When you see him, ask him. <laughs> Read that verse 35 again. 35. Uh-huh. And I will raise me up a faithful priest uh -huh. that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. He said, I will, do, I, I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to what? That which is in my mind. My, my, in my mind. I'm sorry. It, which is in my heart and in my mind. So he's talking about the same thing, ain't he? We just read with the, the heart and the mind. Is, that's really wicked, and then we read the mind is wicked, didn't we? Yes, sir. So we're looking at the same thing. He, he's repeating himself, though, isn't he? Just like he repeats himself when he talks about the fear not the one that can kill the body, but fear the one that can kill the body and the soul and cast it into hell. He's repeating himself. Why? I don't know. Like I said, when you see him, you ask him. You understand? <laughs> That's what God do. He might say Jacob, then he turn right around and say Israel. But he talking about the same people, wasn't he? That's right, man. Let's go now. Let's go to... Uh, do you want to finish the rest of that 35? Yeah, finish it. Just read it over. We got a little time. A and I will time. raise me up. <laughs> and I will raise me up a faithful priest. Uh -huh. That shall do according to that which is in my heart uh -huh. and in my mind. Go ahead. And I will build him a sure house, uh -huh. and he shall walk before mine anointment, mine anointed forever. Now he say, he, and he, what is this he? This is a man, ain't it? Yes, this is a man that we're talking about. A he. But anyway, let's go to Hebrews, and we're going to look at it again. Let's go to Hebrews, the eighth chapter. I mean, now this right here is icing on the cake. <laughs> really, this is icing on the cake. When he started talking about the spirit... He wanted to be blameless. He's talking about he wants your mind to be blameless. We're going to show you. Hebrews 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse... Pick it up at verse 8. Hebrews 8 and 8. And we may, because, you know, the, the, the body and the soul, we know that those are one. And your mind is connected to your... It's is in your body or your soul, ain't it? This is how man works. This is how he makes his body work, doesn't he? It starts in your mind first. I can't tell my hands to put to come up here unless my mind tell me to do it first. Evil starts, or wickedness starts in your mind, don't it? Yes, then you go out and do it. Righteousness starts in your mind first. Then you go out and do it. And when you do righteousness, what are you? You are blameless, aren't you? You are blameless. I'm going to show you. Uh, Hebrews 8 and 8. Hebrews 8 and 8. Go ahead and read. For finding fault with them, he uh -huh. saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel uh -huh. and with the house of Judah. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand, to lead them out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. because they continued not in my covenant, uh -huh. and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Go ahead. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Go ahead. I will put my laws into their mind. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. He said, for this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my laws where? In their minds. And where else? And write them into in their hearts. And write them in their heart. Now, can he write his law in your heart? And then he ain't doing away with the law neither, is he? No, sir. He ain't writing it on stone no more. He said, I'm going to put it on your heart and on your mind. And you know how we know how I know that it's on your mind? Because, you know, when you go to the store, when you were a little kid, you went to the store, didn't you? 
And mama, when you went to the store, you know, because all of us probably done it. We went to the store, you know, we done grabbed some. Mama say, put that down. And you didn't. And mama, pow, because we used to get it right there in the store. <laughs> Wherever you messed up at, that's where you got it at. You understand? So now, I know now, when I go in the store, don't pick nothing up. Right? Well, mama going to get me. It's in my mind now, ain't it? Just like the law of heat when you was a kid. Mama say, get away from that stove. You playing around anyway. You, you know, that heat hit you. Now I know the law of the heat now, don't I? <laughs> don't go around that stove like mama said. Now it's in my mind, ain't it? It's in my mind. But that's what God did. He wrote the laws in your heart and in your mind. This is the heart that he wrote it in. Your mind. You understand? He didn't do away with the law, did he? If he wrote it in your heart and in your mind, how'd he do away with it? That's why I can't understand why people keep talking about he done away with his law. If he did, how did he You know already that you should not be committing adultery. Why? Because you sneak and do it, don't you? I'm not saying us, but I'm saying man. You understand? They sneak and do it, don't they? They already know in their mind, thou should not commit adultery, don't they? Go ahead and read. What will you leave off at? Militant. Go ahead. And I will be to them a God. Uh huh. And they shall be a be to me a people. Uh huh. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother. Uh huh. Saying, Know the Lord. Uh huh. For all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. And all shall know me from the least to the greatest. But you see where he gonna put his laws at? In your heart and in your mind. Same thing. Why is he repeating it like this? I don't know. I don't know. Because uh, 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 cause, uh, uh, the writer right here, he got this from Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. That's where he got this from. I tell you what, let's go over there and read it. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, and I believe that's verse... Uh, at verse 20. Uh, no. Okay, we have Jeremiah 31 and... Hmm. I thought it was Jeremiah 31, ain't hey? Uh, yeah, verse 32, uh, verse 31, 31 and 31, verse 31 and 31, look at where, look at where the writer of Hebrew, this is where he got it from, go ahead and read, verse thir uh, chapter 31, Jeremiah, verse 31, go ahead and read that, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, uh -huh. that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel uh -huh. and with the house of Judah. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, uh -huh. I will put my law in their inward parts uh -huh. and write it in, in their hearts. Ooh, you see this? He said, I'm going to put it in their inward part. What an inward part? That's their body, ain't it? And write it in their heart. That's